How many people here know someone in their immediate circle who suffers from a neurodegenerative disease, such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Huntington disease, or ALS? The show of hands I see before me is hardly surprising given what we know about these conditions. By 2050, more than 14 million Americans will be suffering from a neurodegenerative disease. To put this into perspective, that means for every 36 people you know, your friends, family, and loved ones, one of them will suffer from a fatal and debilitating condition for which there is no cure. In fact, every 65 seconds, one new Alzheimer's case is diagnosed. Every 10 minutes, one new Parkinson's case. And every 90 minutes, one new Huntington disease or ALS case. That means by the end of this talk, about 15 to 20 new cases of neurodegenerative disease will have been diagnosed. So what is a neurodegenerative disease? This is a condition in which nerve cells or neurons in the brain start to deteriorate. At first, these neurons begin to function abnormally, but over time, they're ultimately lost. And as more and more neurons in the brain are lost, symptoms begin to manifest and they continue to worsen over time. Depending on the particular condition, whether it's Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or Huntington disease, patients can experience a wide range of symptoms that can include memory problems, mood changes, or difficulty walking. At first, these symptoms may not have a huge effect on a patient's quality of life. If you imagine an Alzheimer's patient getting ready to go to work in the morning, she might not remember where she placed her keys, or she might get confused about what day of the week it is. Or if you imagine an early Parkinson's patient reaching for a cup of coffee, he might experience a slight tremor as he reaches for it, but ultimately, he'll still be able to pick up that cup and enjoy his morning coffee. But over time, as more and more critical neurons in the brain are lost, that same Alzheimer's patient may no longer remember her loved ones. And that Parkinson's patient, he might not be able to walk, to feed himself, and to carry out other tasks of daily living, tasks that we all take for granted. Eventually, both of these patients will require a full-time caregiver. And what do we know about the impact that this has on society? Well, like I mentioned earlier, by the end of this talk, about 15 to 20 new cases will have been diagnosed. And by 2050, the financial burden of just Alzheimer's disease in the US alone will be greater than $1 trillion. Neurodegenerative diseases can be caused by several different factors, including environmental and genetic factors. But ultimately, the number one risk factor is age. Due to current advances in modern medicine, fewer individuals are dying at young ages from preventable conditions such as heart disease, measles, and other infections. However, this means that the elderly population is rapidly climbing. Virtually every country in the world is experiencing growth in both the number and the proportion of elderly individuals in their populations. In the US, within the next 20 years, one in five Americans will be over the age of 65, and millions of these individuals will be suffering from a neurodegenerative disease. Unfortunately, the drugs that are currently available on the market only mask the symptoms of these conditions, and they don't actually get to the heart of the problem, which is the progressive loss of neurons in the brain. Those two patients I mentioned earlier, as they continue to lose more and more of their critical neurons, not only are their symptoms worsening, but these drugs are proving to be less and less effective at masking these symptoms. That Alzheimer's patient can't remember where she lives, she can't recognize her loved ones, let alone remember to take her drugs. And that Parkinson's patient, he's not able to stand up on his own and he requires a walker to move around. At this stage of disease, both of these patients can no longer take care of themselves and they rely on a full-time caregiver. As such, there is a glaring need for the development of a therapeutic approach that has the potential to stop or reverse the progression of neurodegenerative diseases. One of the most promising avenues for treating neurodegenerative disease are gene therapies. Each cell in our body contains DNA, which acts as a manual with instructions for cells on how to make different proteins. Gene therapy is a technique that uses pieces of DNA to treat or prevent disease. In the case of neurodegenerative disease, gene therapies can do one of two things. They can either introduce a new gene in a, into a cell to allow that cell to make a beneficial or protective protein, or if a cell in the brain has a faulty gene that is causing neurons to die, gene therapy can actually turn off that gene or replace it. And this is revolutionary because it means that gene therapies can actually change the course of a condition.
they can actually stop or prevent disease progression. However, one of the main obstacles standing in the way of developing gene therapies for treating these conditions is the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier is the body's way of protecting the brain from bacteria and other disease-causing agents. The downside of the blood-brain barrier is that it also prevents large drugs, including proteins and gene therapies, from getting into the brain when they're taken orally or when they're injected into the bloodstream. In most clinical trials for gene therapies, the drugs are directly injected into the brain. And not only is this extremely invasive, but when you consider that the majority of patients are sick and elderly, this is also quite risky. And furthermore, drugs that are injected into the brain in this way, they don't actually distribute well into the brain. They either remain at the injection site or they only penetrate the superficial layers of the brain. And this is problematic because it means that the drugs aren't getting to the deeper brain regions, which are usually the most affected in these conditions. All in all, I've painted a pretty daunting picture. I've basically stood here and told you all that in the next 20 to 30 years, millions of individuals will be suffering from a neurodegenerative disease, and that we currently don't have any adequate therapies available to treat these patients. Not only that, but even for approaches like gene therapies, which are really our best bet, we don't have a way to administer them to patients without resorting to invasive surgical procedures. But what if I told you that the key to treating a neurodegenerative disease, such as Parkinson's, could be as simple as a nasal spray? Internasal delivery is a little-known and underutilized approach for delivering drugs directly to the brain. And it's really as simple as it sounds. All it requires is administration of a drug into the nose. So how can this be? This is because there are two pathways that directly connect the nose to the brain. These pathways are a result of two main nerves that have their nerve endings inside the nose and that reach all the way up into the brain. They thus provide two channels that directly connect the nose to the brain. Once drugs are given in the nose, they can actually travel along the outside of these two nerves to sort of sneak their way into the brain. And once they're there, they then travel in the spaces that surround blood vessels, which allows them to be distributed throughout the whole brain. Internasal administration has many advantages. It's very quick. It takes less than one hour for a drug that's given in the nose to reach the back of the brain. And it's non-invasive. All it would require is a simple nasal spray or nasal drops that, it could, that a patient could administer in the comfort of their own home. And this also makes it easily repeatable. And by directly delivering drugs to the brain, this also prevents side effects in unaffected body organs because the drugs aren't really going to the rest of the body. One promising protein that has the potential to stop or reverse the progression of Parkinson's disease is called GDNF. GDNF protects the particular neurons, the dopamine neurons that die in Parkinson's. Most patients don't begin to develop symptoms of Parkinson's until they lose about 50 to 70% of their dopamine neurons. And these neurons play an important role in regulating movement. So it's really their loss that is causing the symptoms that are associated with the condition. GDNF can actually protect these neurons from dying and it can make them healthier. And because patients don't begin to develop symptoms until they lose about 50 to 70% of their dopamine neurons, this means that there is a window of opportunity in which early intervention could allow these patients to live a relatively normal quality of life. So if that Parkinson's patient I mentioned earlier were to be treated with GDNF early on before he developed debilitating symptoms, maybe he wouldn't reach the later stages of the condition where he couldn't walk or feed himself. However, GDNF is a large protein, and as such, it can't cross the blood-brain barrier when it's taken orally or when it's injected into the bloodstream. So what we really need in order to fully harness its therapeutic potential is a way of giving it to patients that is non-invasive. And this is exactly what we set out to do in the Wazak lab here at Northeastern. We thought that intranasal delivery was an ideal way of getting GDNF into the brain, but we wanted to take it a step further. Instead of just giving the GDNF protein intranasally, we collaborated with an industry partner to produce a GDNF gene therapy. And the idea was that this gene therapy would then be taken up into cells, and it would allow them to make their own GDNF, and that this would provide a continuous source of the protein in the brain. So we studied this approach in a rat model of Parkinson's disease. And we found that intranasal delivery of this GDNF gene therapy successfully bypassed the blood-brain barrier.
once it was taken up into the brain, it was taken up by cells which then became like mini factories, producing the protein all over the brain for at least six months. And what we found was great. The animals in our study went from losing 70 to 80% of their dopamine neurons to losing just 20%. And this was after a single dose. And they no longer showed any symptoms of the condition. Not only does this approach provide hope for the development of a therapeutic approach that may one day stop Parkinson's in its tracks, but it also serves as proof of concept for the development of other intranasal gene therapies for treating so many different neurodegenerative disorders. This approach has unlimited potential. There are numerous proteins that have therapeutic potential for treating each of these conditions. And if we could intranasally administer the genes that code for them, we might be able to stop the progression of these conditions. That means that in the future, if any of your friends, family, or loved ones are diagnosed with a neurodegenerative disease, it doesn't have to be a life sentence. As amazing as this is, there's still so much more that needs to be done to make this approach a reality for the millions of patients that are currently suffering, studying intranasal delivery in depth, and further developing potential gene therapies could be the key to curing so many fatal and debilitating conditions. I know better than to ask you all to go to graduate school to help us reach this goal. <laughs> but I will ask that you consider helping nonprofit organizations and academic laboratories in any way that you can, and that you help fund research that's focused on overcoming the blood-brain barrier to treat neurodegenerative disease. If we could utilize this approach on a broader scale, gene therapies for all neurodegenerative disorders can and will become a reality, allowing millions of patients to find hope with just a simple nasal spray. Thank you.